What is Azure Kubernetes Service? Essentially, it is platform as a service, Kubernetes, that you can spin up in a few minutes and have yourself a Kubernetes cluster. It's built on the Azure triplet. And we've got a video about that you can go look at. And the Azure Container Service. The Azure Container Service is the high availability master backplane, which is free and offered platform as a service. What you pay for are the VMs that you use as agents, and that pricing is dependent on the type of VM and its size and parameters. So we're going to show you how you can spin up your own AKS, your own Kubernetes cluster, quickly and easily. We're going to assume you have an Azure subscription, but we're going to show you how to make the keys and role-based access control you'll need to provision your AKS. We'll generate our public and private keys in this video greatly speed it up and we'll move the mouse around to get the desired randomness. Our private key will get a PPK extension. Our public key will get a PEM extension. Our OpenSSH private key should be named .SSH. Here are the resulting key files. We have the private key, which is a PPK extension. We have our open SSH version of the same key, which we should give an SSH extension to. And we have our public key that we generated, and it has a PEM extension. Here's what they look like. Here's our private key in its PPK format. Here's the same key exported as an open SSH key. And here's our PEM style key. We're going to use this key when we create our AKS instance up in Azure. For the next steps, we're going to need our CLI to be logged into Azure. So we're going to issue the AZ login command. If you haven't downloaded the Azure CLI tools, you should stop and do that first. Let's log into Azure. And we're going to issue the AZ login command. And it's going to think about it for a minute. And then it's going to tell us what URL to go to and what secret code to put in. And I'm going to do that. And I'll be right back. OK, I'm logged into Azure. And it dumps out my subscription information. And now I want to make sure that I'm pointing at the subscription that I want to be pointing at. I have an environment variable that I set my subs primary subscription ID to. Even if you only have one subscription, explicitly setting your subscription is a good idea by issuing the az account show command. And there we go. Okay, let's create a resource group. Before you create your resource group, make sure that you look up what locations support AKS and use one of those. Here's our resource group, all created. We're going to execute this command to create the role-based access control we need. And once again, I'm using my subscription variable so I don't have to copy paste or remember what it is. By the way, this can take a while and it'll retry a whole bunch of times. Don't worry about it. It's expected. And since we're going to need this for later, we're going to copy and paste this into a JSON file and keep it somewhere safe. I keep it in the same folder that I keep my keys in. Here's our RBAC JSON file. And I want to point out that where it says app ID, that that's actually the username field we're going to use when we're provisioning our AKS. And of course, the password field is the password. Here we are logged into the Azure portal using the same credentials we use to do AZ login. Here is the new dialog for AKS. And you can go new and put in AKS and search and it'll take you to here. So let's go ahead and click on create and we're gonna give our cluster a name and I'm gonna use that same thing for a DNS prefix. I'm gonna use Kubernetes version 1.8.1 and I'm going to use our existing resource group that we created. In step two, we need to supply two different kinds of credentials. The first two make a user that we can use to log into our cluster. We're gonna give it a name and we're also going to give it our public key that we generate in the key section. In the second set, we're going to tell it 
how the cluster should run. In other words, as what user the cluster should run as, and that is going to be our RBAC username and password. That's the app ID and password field from our RBAC. And then we're going to say how many nodes we want to run, and I'm going to pick one, and I'm going to go ahead and leave the default machine type and so on. Once we filled out the form, Azure is going to check to make sure that the configuration we gave it is okay. And then if we hit the go button, it's going to provision our AKS cluster. Now we return to our CLI command prompt. We want to make sure that we're in our home directory. On Windows, using the Visual Studio command prompt, we can issue the following command, cd to user profile. And as you can see, I'm already there. AZ AKS get credentials dash N, the name of our Kubernetes cluster, dash G, the name of our resource group, will download a file into our home directory in the dot kube subfolder called config. And it will have all the information that the Kubernetes commands need to be able to properly interact with our Kubernetes cluster. Like everything else, we want to make sure the right things are connected to the right places. Kube control is the Kubernetes primary tool, and it's used to manage your cluster through the command line. We're going to ask it for its cluster info, and we're going to examine the output to make sure it's pointing at our Kubernetes instance. Next, we're going to want to access the Kubernetes dashboard, which we can do by firing up kube control proxy. And then we can browse to the resulting website and see what we get. As you can see, what we get is a list of all the available APIs. And if we add slash UI to the end of our URL, what we're going to get is the dashboard that we can use to manage our Kubernetes instance. When we're done, let's close the browser and stop the proxy, and we're ready to do our next thing. Although the dashboard is very useful, most Kubernetes management is done through command line tools like kube control. There are more tools than that, and you can go read about them in the Kubernetes documentation. Here's an example where we're getting the namespaces of our current Kubernetes instance. Quick sidebar, what got created when we provisioned our AKS instance? Well, you remember our original resource group. If we go and look in there and look at the resources, it created a managed container service. That's that master backplane we talked about. And if we look carefully, you'll see that it created another resource group with the name of our original resource group in it and the name of our named container service. And you can see it created a lot of handy plumbing for us. Most importantly, it created the virtual machine you see there as the second line. And because it's a virtual machine, when you're not using it, you can turn it off and that will save you some money because you're only going to get charged when your virtual machines are actually running. So let's go ahead and stop the, the virtual machine. When we're ready to resume our cluster, we're going to start our virtual machine again. As you can see, our virtual machine is restarted. Let's go see and make sure that it's active, up, and happy. We'll repeat our cluster info command, and now we'll use kube proxy to restart our dashboard and go check things out. And you can see that if we go to the nodes section of our dashboard, that once again, we have an agent with an agent pool. And of course, if you're done with your Kubernetes cluster altogether, you can either delete the resource group that holds the Kubernetes cluster, or you can go into the Kubernetes cluster master backplane node, and you can delete the Kubernetes cluster from there. 